Hi ladies, today I'm going to do a full face of makeup using some fabulous new little products that I found and I'm going to share my favourite red lipsticks for blonde haired blue eyed women like me. I'm also going to cover up this little bruise that I've got from a little tweakment that I had. Let's get started. First of all, I have already prepped my skin with Ombriolis. This, as you know, is my absolute favorite base for makeup. It's an incredible moisturizer. It's a fabulous base. And I think it's just, to be honest with you, divine. The next thing that I'm going to use is this C cream from Eborian. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is illuminating, it covers imperfections, blemishes, redness. I just absolutely love it. I'm also going to be using this from Aborian. This is their Super BB Cream and this is anti-imperfection. So any redness, any purple, hollowing, dark shadows, it's great for that. And then this, ladies, I am telling you, this is fantastic. This is the Wet and Wild Dewy Illuminating Foundation. I've got the shade Soft Beige. It might be a little bit light for me, but I'm going with it. It's the winter time and I adore it. So first up, let's use the CC Cream. It is like skincare and makeup in one. It comes out white. I'm just going to pop that across my cheeks. Look, you see, it actually looks like just skincare and it feels amazing on the skin. So I'm just going to rub that in just as you would your foundation or even just your skincare and pop that. Also, I'm going to pat it under the eyes. Eborian do a eye cream as well. It gives such a lovely glow, I love it. The next thing I'm going to use is the BB cream. They have a BB cream and then they have a super BB cream. This is the super BB cream. I am not entirely sure of the difference, but I will say that a tiny amount goes a long way. So I'm just going to use my ring fingers here and I'm going to pop it on this little blemish that I have. We won't mention how I got that. Well, I will mention it. I had a tiny little bit of Botox just to help with my crow's feet. And of course, needles, they can bruise. I'm going to just gently sweep it over my eyelids and pat it. I try not to drag my eyes. It is a delicate area, as we all know. And I'm just going to pat it all the way along. There you are. So you can see it's helped with my hollowing and it's just given that little bit of illumination. I love it. Next I'm going straight in with the Wet and Wild. It's a glass container which is nice and it has this little plastic applicator. I'm going to pop on a little bit. It goes a long way. So you don't need a lot. I'm just going to use my fingers for Ease. Absolutely love this foundation. It's moisturizing. It's so nice for an older skin. I'm going to just pat it around my eyes as well and across my eyelids. That's the Wet and Wild foundation. Oh, it's just so, so nice. I can't recommend it enough. It's so nice. Just gives you that radiance, that bit of glow that at this time of year, we all could do with. So for my eyes, I thought we would have a play with this Revolution Kit that I've got. It's got some fabulous colors in there, but I thought I would have a go with the lighter shades, the more neutral shades, because I want to wear a red lip. First thing I'll do is go in with the lighter peachy one over here, and then I'll try the darker shades and a little bit of shimmer, nothing too much. I'm going to use quite a nice soft brush, taking a fair amount of the powder. I am going to take that pigment all the way up from my eyelid here, and then all the way up. So it's a pretty color. You can see it's a very pretty peach. It's very light, it's, it's not particularly heavily pigmented. Now I'm going to go in with the darker shade and I'm going to do a little bit of a V. So it's gonna go along here and here just to give the illusion of a lift. 
I'm going to use more of a tapered brush so that I can be a little bit more precise. And I'm going to pop that first of all along the lash line, just on the outer edge, and then into my crease. Need a bit more. So just across and up. To blend those together now with my fluffy brush, like that. That's really pretty. And now I'm going to use the gold. Actually use my finger and apply a little bit of shimmer just across my lid just so I can be precise and avoid too much fallout. So I'm just adding a tiny bit more of that darker shade just on the outer edge, just to give me a bit more of the color. I'm going to just then add one more sweep of this iridescent. Now for under the eyes, I'm going to go back with the darker shade and just come under my eyelashes here and sweep out. So for just above the lash, I'm going to give it a very thin line with the darker shade. Let's have a look, see whether I can just do that and just create just a lash line like so and just slightly wing it. It doesn't have to be anything dramatic. I'm just playing with this palette, see what we can create. So that's a very pretty look from the Revolution palette. I'm now going to just do my lashes with the Maybelline Sky High. I really like this. This is such a great mascara. So that's my eyes done with this little palette. I Just to recap, I used this shade, this one, and this one here. So I used these three shades here. I haven't touched the dramatic glitter yet, which I'm sure is beautiful. Now I'm just going to do my blush and then I'm going to choose my lipstick. For my blush, I love this iconic cream blush. I use it lots and lots, and it gives a lovely little bit of radiance and glow as well. I'm also going to use this blush. It's from Beauty Pie. It's their Fresh Faced, I think it's called Fresh Faced, that's the actual color. And it is a cream blush, but I'm going to use a little stippling action just to pop that on my cheeks. So that's my eyes. I really like that palette. I think it's a really good affordable palette, but I did feel like I needed to really load my brush up and go over a couple of times to get this intensity that I've achieved today. It looks lovely. It looks just like everyday makeup, but you could add more of the party glitter, I guess, to up level it and for an evening look. I am now going to choose what I want on my lips. I did want to have a red lip and now's the perfect opportunity to try a warmer red or a versus a cooler red. It's quite interesting the different reds and how they affect your look and your skin and your teeth because a warmer red, more orange undertones, yellow undertones will make your teeth look more yellow whereas a cooler red with more blue undertones will make your teeth look more white. So the first one that I'm going to try is on the warmer scale. This is a bourgeois. It is their Rouge Fabulous in the shade 10 and it's called Scarlet It Be. It feels lovely on the lips, really lovely and creamy. I feel that this lipstick would be great perhaps in the summer, not necessarily in the winter for my skin type, pale, blue eyes, blonde hair. I definitely think it's quite orange on my skin and for this particular look it almost makes everything look a little bit more orange. I feel like this isn't the one for this particular look today. It's not terrible though, it's a lovely colour. It feels like I've got lipstick on my lips, if you know what I mean. It feels quite creamy. I'm imagining there's quite a bit of transfer on this, so I'm going to give it a test. So you're not going very far if you're having a cup of coffee or perhaps you're having a mistletoe kiss. This one is going to transfer very quickly, but that is why we're testing these red lipsticks today. So the next in the red lineup is a Max Factor. This one is called Ruby Tuesday. I've got high hopes for this one. It's definitely more of a cooler shade. It is, I really like these lipsticks. They feel nice. I know that they're drugstore, but they feel more premium. And let's have a look at this one. Now that one I prefer. Now you may not agree, you might prefer the Bourgeois. I actually prefer this one. 
I feel that it definitely makes my teeth look a little bit whiter. I feel that it isn't drawing attention to orangey red undertones, but it's definitely a cooler red. I feel that this red is more wintry. It feels very much more Christmassy. I love that it hasn't got too much gloss. It's just a little bit creamy. It was a little bit more drag applying it than the bourgeois but this is definitely a cooler red. You can see the blue undertone. I like this one. I think it's really, really pretty. And the more that I'm wearing it, the more I think it's pretty. Is it a bit dark for me? The one thing I'd say about the Max Factor lipstick over the Bourjois is there's quite a fragrance. Not horrible, but there's definitely feels like there's a fragrance and maybe a taste. So what do you think? I feel that this one, maybe is a little dark with this particular makeup on. I don't know, you let me know what you think. I feel that it has got a little bit of fragrance and it does feel ever so slightly heavier on the lips, but I do feel that I prefer this color. And especially now that I'm wearing it, I'm looking at myself in my camera, I'm looking at myself in the mirror, it feels more glamorous. So the next one that I'm trying is a bourgeois. Again, it's called Rouge Velvet. This has a tiny little applicator. Let's have a look. Ah, wow. I love this one already. It's beautiful to apply. You can be really precise with this applicator. Wow, that is what I would call an absolute knockout red. That is, I haven't even hit my lip properly at the bottom there. It feels like it's mattifying quite quickly. This is obviously a velvet, very matte, beautiful to apply. It went on like butter. It was so gorgeous. How are we liking this red? What about this red? I feel like this is a proper red, like a real 1940s siren red. It feels really, really nice on the lips. It is out there. It's a dramatic statement red, French red. Um, I actually love it. I think it has got warm elements in it. Definitely feels like it could be sat on straddling the cool versus warm reds. But I think that this is a gorgeous red if you were looking for a matte red. And personally, I don't like my reds too glossy. I feel that they're already a statement. You don't need to have all of that gloss as well on top. I think this is the ultimate red. I am annoying myself that I missed my border ever so slightly, but I just wanted to share that with you just so that you can have a look too. What do you think of this one? Let's do the transfer test. Nothing at all. This one is a really, really good one. So, so far, this is winning it for me. This is the Bourjois Rouge Velvet Ink. So the next red that I'm going to try is another Max Factor. It's called Cherry Kiss. Now from the bullet, it looks a little bit kind of cooler, but I actually think this is going to come out a little bit pinky. So let's have a look. It really smells like, like sheer butter. This is definitely a cooler red. I think it's a lovely, lovely shade. I don't feel like it's scarlet red. I feel that this is definitely more of a pinky red. It went on beautifully. It didn't drag. The other Max Factor one, which was the Ruby Tuesday that we just tried, definitely felt more of a drag. This went on beautifully. It smells like sheer butter. It's got a lovely, lovely texture. I feel that it's a lovely color. It's a great everyday red, but I feel that it's just lacking something just that little bit of something. What do you think? You can try the transfer test. And yeah, just as I thought, it doesn't claim to have any real staying power. It's a hydrating lipstick that is lovely and nice on the lips, but just with one little touch, you can see that it's already diffused and taken away the vast majority of that color. So my final pick of red lipsticks for winter 2023 is the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Color. This is the shade 510. So let's have a go, let's have a look. So I've gone in just with one applicator full. 
and that's the immediate color. Now, of course, you can layer it up for more intense color. It's already drying. It's quite a dramatic dry when it dries. It feels sticky in the corners of the mouth, but that's it setting down. That's it drying down. So I'm going to leave that just for a couple of minutes for it to completely dry, completely mattify, and then I'll do the transfer test. I have to say on first impressions, I love this color. It's definitely a cooler red. I really like it. I feel that it is a statement red. Uh, it makes your teeth look white, which is lovely. And it will be fabulous if it really does last for 24 hours, but let's see. So it's been about two minutes now and my lips do feel quite dry. It's sticking, so it's probably not fully dry, but I'm going to pop on the balm straight away. It's a really lovely red. I have to say, I'm not a fan of the setup. I'm not a fan of how my lips felt whilst it was drying down, but I suppose you'd get used to that. It does feel like it is glued to my lips, but not in a negative way, in a way that I guess you would just have to get used to wearing it. I think that it would be a perfect everyday red. You can pop it on your lips and forget about it. So that's it. Now let's have a look when we try and take it off. I always think these 24 hour lip stains often they really leave a stain on your lips as well. And if you want to switch your color in the evening, then perhaps this isn't the type of product or lip product that you should be opting for. Let me have a go. Let's try and take it off. I kid you not, that isn't going anywhere. It's a good job I like this color because it looks like it is definitely staying for a couple of days. I'm going to try and get it, get it off and we can come back with our final analysis. So that's it, my light has decided to die. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I thought I would try these fabulous lipsticks. That was two Max Factor, two Bourgeois and the Maybelline Lip Stain, which really did stay. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, bye for now.